Hello, uh, salut, bonjour, bonsoir, ça va, ça va bien, je m'appelle Sidoué. So, we are looking at, we are going to take a look at the, the round of the same fixture between the Indomitable Lions of Cameroon and the Sidoué's of Nigeria. It is a big clash at the FHB Stadium later tonight here in Abidjan. And uh, we will be looking at, uh, you know, what to expect, how big this fixture is and the ramification of the results to each of the national teams. So I'll have a uh, Tunde, I have with me Tunde Lodini of the premium time. She is going to uh, have some time to look at the fixture and uh, to give me his opinion about what we should be expecting and what the two national teams you know, should do to ensure that they have victory in this particular game and progress to the next round. So I'm very certain that you enjoy it and I hope you love it. Well, I think I want to tread cautiously and say it's one of the biggest. Uh, well, of course, we have many other big clashes. Which, yeah. which one do you think is No, no, biggest? no. You cannot outrightly pick a, a, a fixture and say it's the biggest. This fixture has a, a fixture of, as it has it, a feature of a big clash between these two countries we have eight afcon titles um looking at the caliber of players if you look at the squad uh, the the value of this of these two squads is actually high on the continent so yes it has all the elements of a big fixture but like i said let's not uh, um let's not be so flamboyant about it and say it's the biggest it's one of the biggest arguably one of the biggest actually and so um, the fans should be expressing something big and um saturday night here in abuja on the strength of what has happened so far here in um Kodova, you would want to easily pick the super eagles as the favorites it had seven points like you rightly pointed out and um they could even afford to lose their last game and still qualify but that wasn't the case for Cameroon. They needed a last minute um, goal to actually um, seal their uh, place in this, in this particular round of 16. And so on the strength of how they progressed into the round of 16, you would easily want to pick Nigeria as the uh, favorite. But I don't think that would count uh, because the group stage is gone. There's no, they're not carrying any advantage from the group stage into the knockout stage. So, it's like a clean slate. Everybody starting from from ground zero, so it's not going to whatever happened in the group stage is past, and so it's going to be 90 minutes or even 120 minutes of action, or even penalty shootouts that will determine who goes forward and who goes back home. Yeah, momentum. Yeah, both. Okay, if, if, if you're looking at momentum, both of them won the last game. Um, for a team to dig deep to score three goals um and that was what they actually needed it's sort of a momentum even for me i think cameroon has a bigger momentum because of many people expected more from nigeria uh they could only score through a, a an own goal so it wasn't the best of yes the result they got the result but it wasn't the kind of commanding performance that was expected what for a cameroonian team that had to play that five goal thriller and had to so the momentum is for them that if we can actually um serve all this um uh, our qualification then it's time to now hit another note and start so talking about momentum i don't think nigeria has the edge over 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 cameroon uh, but like i said beyond whatever happened in in the group stage the the knockout stage is a different ball of uh, the different kettle of fish and whatever happened in the past might not might not um have a bearing on what happens on saturday these two teams, they know themselves very well. They've met at least almost seven times in Afghan uh, games, and it's it's neither here or there. It's even more painful that on this same pitch that they will be playing, they will be playing on Saturday night is where Cameroon won their first Afghan title at the expense of Nigeria. So it's there's so much emotions, there's so much history around this game that. Um, gives it a feeling that it's going to be a very great game for everyone to, to watch. Uh, so this this scenario you painted is very interesting. 
you see a team that is scoring, you see a team that is defending. So who who is who is going to come out tops? And so for Nigeria, I think what Nigeria needs to do is the goals they've scored doesn't doesn't um, tally with the chances they've created. So one thing Nigeria wants to get right against Cameroon is converting their chances. Uh, if they go on the, with the same, create five chances, create ten chances, and score just one, it might not be enough for this game. And so they have the ability to open up defenses, create chances. Now it's time to bury the chances. Yes, I know that from what they've shown so far, if they score a goal, they appear to be a team that can defend that goal um, to the last minute. But I would not want them to take that approach because they won't go against Cameroon. Cameroon will not give up to the last minute and if for any reason they get the equalizer it swings the momentum in their favor and for all you care it might be dampening for the super eagles and that may be the decider so um the super eagles having the momentum is um having the the defensive um upper hand is good but they should also be wary against the the cameroonian teams that have gone so well to score six goals for themselves For me, I think it's very big. Uh, we know what uh, Vincent Abubakar can do. We saw him at the last Afghan tournament, which they hosted. He singularly carried them on their back to ensure that they had something um, to, 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 to hold on to. And so he's coming back into the team. I think it's a big boost for Cameroon. And it's, a, um, it's something that the Super Eagles has to watch out for because uh, for me, I think he has a better conversion rate. If he has, a, if he has three out of um, one out of three, he has, he's going to convert, convert his chances, and that has not been what that has not been the case with our own strikers. We have strikers that have had two, three, four chances, and they they ended up not scoring any of them. So Abubakar coming for 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 the super, uh, sorry for the Cameroonians is a big boost. Unfortunately for Nigeria, well, I won't say unfortunately, we have players that are still not tested in this tournament that might actually be. Um, the joker that would help us out but whether coach Pacero has the belief in these players to bring them on to to give them a chance um is another thing i cannot say for now but i think we have the same players on the bench that have not tested action in this um Afghan tournament and they could be the ones that would wreck the lions because i i know the all attention will be on osime and all that but we have an unnatural we have mofi we have a natural that have not played that have that are also good enough um, to to score on 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 the day that they they, they find their reading. Uh, well, this Afghan tournament particularly has been one full with surprises where um, nobody showing anybody respect, and um, people, the so-called underdogs are taking the games to the favorites. We've seen Ghana crashed out. We've seen Algeria. Same Ghana, I'm um, sorry, um, Tunisia also. So it, it's a tournament that is um, highly competitive that you cannot easily stick at your neck and say this is going to be the winner. And so for me, generally, it's a good tournament because there's nothing as annoying if a tournament is so predictive and you say this person will win, it does, and you move on like that. And so for me, what will be a... a, a, a a successful tournament for any African team is the kind of play that you, the the kind of your your performance on the pitch. Yes, the result is ultimate, and like you said, just one team is going to is going to lift this trophy. And so, but at the times, look at the game Nigeria played against Cordova compared to the game they played against Guinea Bissau. That those for me are two different. Um, um, games. So if the Super Eagles can maintain the momentum they had against Cordova, play even better today, even if they exit, which I don't pray for, it's going to be seen as a, a, a at least it's going to be seen as that, okay, the team is gelling in, because one of the problems we have is that the Nigerian team is seen as a bunch of individual talents. The team chemistry is just about playing out now. We, we, but if they can move beyond this round of 16. I think getting to the semi-final is, is the minimum that, for me, that will be seen as success. So, 
they can't go beyond they can't go below a semi-final and still be termed as a success as far as i'm concerned so for the big teams that are left i'm sure getting to the semi-final should be the minimum target they have for themselves why we now leave it to chance who is going to be the eventual winner of the tournament